Welcome to the fifth training video in the series Raw Development with Sigma Photo Pro. In this video I look at developing an X3i file as well as working with images in batch mode. The video assumes that one is familiar with working with color images in SPP. First of all, working in batch mode. This can be very useful if you have a set of images which should be developed with the same settings in SPP. For example, when putting together a so-called focus stack, a set of pictures are taken which differ only in the position of the focus point, and these should thus be developed with identical settings. Such images will be combined later in a separate software to a single image, where the elements in focus are the sum of all the individual images. Serene Stacker is a good example of such a software. Fundamentally, there are two different methods to apply the raw development settings to a new set of images. First of all, I could open an image and adjust the raw development settings as I want. These settings can now be saved, here on the right. Of course, a clear name, such as image number and date, for example, should be used. After the settings have been saved, the image itself can be closed without having to save the image. Now it is possible to select all of the images in the thumbnail overview to which these settings should be applied. And here, since I did not save the original image, I select this as well. Finally, I can select Batch Setting from the Edit menu. This opens a menu where I could adjust all of the raw development settings, though obviously without being able to see the result of such changes. Here I will load the previously saved settings. If I now click on Set to X3F X3i files, the raw settings will be added to each individual image. To note is that no obvious change will happen to the thumbnail. If I now save the images, then, assuming the settings were saved with the X3F files, the changes to the raw files will become visible. It is possible to shorten this workflow even further, if I do not intend to change the settings. First of all, the images are selected. For demonstration purposes, I will also give them a new name, using the command batch rename, and using the menu to give a new name, where I can define which number is used as the start point. When this is complete, I can select the images and simply open the Save menu and click on Adjustment Mode Custom. Here, for example, under Color, I can choose the settings I want to apply. Since I have now chosen a new setting, it is possible to see the changes directly on the thumbnails again after the view is refreshed. And, of course, both sets of TIFFs are available in the appropriate folder. The second topic for this video is developing a color X3i file. An X3i file is the result of an image being taken with the SD Quattro or SD Quattro H in SFD mode. The result is an image which has a very low level of noise without any loss in detail whatsoever. As such, it is possible to see details in the shadow areas of an image from an X3i file which are normally lost. Furthermore, since the images are extremely clean, the representation of shiny surfaces is incredibly realistic. I do not have a problem with luminous noise per se. I would rather have a little more luminous noise than have detail removed by the noise reduction process. However, when you see the result from an X3i file, then this is something else entirely. In SFD mode, the camera produces an X3i file by taking seven pictures which will be combined automatically in SPP. The seven images will be taken automatically at ISO 100, so that the images differ only in their exposure time, that is from minus 3 to plus 3 EV. The seven images are combined in SPP into a single TIFF file. The processing of an X3i file is however not intuitive and because of the way differently exposed images respond differently to tonal adjustments and color corrections, this can very easily result in an image which is far from perfect. For this reason, it is even more important to remember that the objective of the development of an X3i file is to produce the best result for further processing and not to attempt to reach a final finished image. With this in mind, when the image is taken, set the white balance in the camera to auto. 
Furthermore, it's important that the fourth, i.e. the middle image, actually has an exposure setting of 0 EV, or perhaps even better, minus 0.3 EV. In SPP, the X3i editing menu can be opened with a right click and choosing Open in X3i edit window. Here I have the chance to choose which images are to be combined in the resulting TIFF file. I would recommend to use all seven images, even when the minus 3 EV and plus 3 EV images do not look good in their own right. Clicking on the button on the top right then opens the normal color editing window. This could have been opened directly by choosing Review Images Color from the X3i thumbnail. Remember this file is approximately 450 megabytes and the initial conversion is therefore understandably slow. Important is to assure that the adjustment mode is set to auto and not to make any adjustments to the tonal adjustment panel. Similarly the white balance should be set to auto, the color mode set to standard and the color adjustment reset. As with an X3F file, the chrome and luminous noise reduction sliders can be set left. After the conversion is complete, which has been shortened here, the detail slider can be adjusted fully to the right. At first glance at the tonal adjustment panel, it is enough to show that the result is not that which one would expect from an X3F file. Although the image should look ok, the exposure will be well to the left, that is minus, and the contrast well to the right that is in plus. Furthermore, the shadow and highlight controller are not set at zero. The saturation sharpening of fill light should however be at zero. It is important to realize that the result is not a single file, rather a very complex extract from seven images which are still completely active in the background. For this reason only very mild adjustments to the color mode equals neutral or standard or the color adjustment panel are recommended. This is because all the changes will be applied to all seven images to differing extent and it is very possible that when the changes have been applied, particularly in the highlight areas, that the images will no longer fit well together. For this reason the white balance is also best left on auto. Fine adjustments for brightness and contrast are made with the shadow and highlight controls and possibly with the exposure and contrast sliders. The important here is that the highlights do not blow out and that the gradients in the highlights are smooth and free from unexpected colors. Here I have a single X3F file editors I wanted the result. The image has had some chroma noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw. At 100% it is possible to see just how clean the image from the X3I file is, even though the detail slider was set completely to the right. For me though it is the edge of the vase which I find most impressive. Here are two porcelain pieces shot as an X3i raw file. In both cases a wonderfully realistic representation. I hope that with this series of videos that I will have helped somebody perhaps find a new creative possibility with their Sigma camera. Thank you and good luck with your Sigma camera and with SPP.